The next stage in this animation is to import a logo. We're going to make this logo start out quite small and then grow until it's bigger than the screen. I'm going to import a logo called IamALogo.ping. There we go, and that's not a bad size for how it's going to pause, but we want it to get a lot bigger than that when it leaves the screen and obviously start much smaller. I've put that it's when we imported that it came in as a group and it's always a good idea to name groups as soon as you can. I'm going to create an element to go behind that, a big white box, and we'll drag behind it like that in the layers panel. I'm going to keep them separate, but I'll select them both together and add a really basic behavior to fade them in or out or both. This behavior is fade in, fade out, and we're actually just going to fade them out. I've got that in my favorites menu. I could just choose fade in, fade out from there. But the long way around is to use library, go to behaviors, basic motion, and find fade in, fade out. You could add it to your favorites menu. Not a bad idea. Just drag it up right there. Anyway, once you have it selected, hit apply. You'll then have two different fade in, fade out behaviors in your layers pane. I'm going to select the rectangle, hold down the command key, and select I am a logo, and I'm going to press O. O trims the object's out point to the current playhead. Is that what I want? Maybe not quite. We want to make this opening session five seconds long, so I'll move down there and press O again. Just like in Final Cut, I sets the in point and O sets the out point of any item. And learning how to manipulate this means you can work with the mini timeline at the bottom of the canvas. Now, these two objects, I want to change the fade in, fade out duration. So I'm going to select both of them with command click and then bring up the heads up display or the HUD by pressing F7. It's quite good for the built in behaviors because you get little graphical control. So dragging the fade in down to zero leaves us with just a fade out at 20 frames. Now, if we play from the beginning, nothing happens at first, it only fades out. In fact, I want these fade in and these fade out effects rather to be offset. So it happen at different times. So if we move back to maybe half a second before the other one fades out, I'm going to have the rectangle fading out. So if I press O there, then it will fade out sooner. The behavior will automatically track the, the length of that object in time. So now when I play, the background fades out before the logo. You can tweak this if it's not quite right. Push it just a little bit later and press O. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now if I select the first item, close down the HUD, or just close it when you don't want it, head to the inspector, head to properties, and I'm going to set some keyframes to control the scale of the logo over time. If we go back to the very beginning, press that little button there to set a keyframe on scale, move halfway through, set another keyframe, and then move to the end and set another keyframe. In fact, just past the end of the object is fine. Now that I've got the three keyframes, I'm going to change the values. And in this case, I'm going to drag the slider. I can make it quite a bit bigger, or I can also click and drag sideways on the numbers to make this object bigger. I want it quite bigger, so maybe 200%. I use the little arrow next to the create keyframe button to jump back to the previous keyframe and 54% should be fine. Jump back to the first keyframe and make it really very small indeed. Now, before we tweak this any further, you'll see, yeah, the change from medium to large is at a different speed from the change from small up to medium. And we really should tweak that and make it smoother. We'll go with the sizes as they are for the moment, but what I really want to do is, you know, tweak how that uh, size control is changing between small and large. So we're going to close down layers with command four and open up the keyframe editor with command eight. To change that, we need to change the keyframe graph. And you can see the animated parameters, in this case scale, changing over time. 
we've got the three the three keyframes at the start, at the middle, and the end of this object's lifespan. Because we use the entire scale properties, we've got changes on X and Y and Z, which is fine, but a little inconvenient because if I pick up the one keyframe, I'm only going to change the one on top, X. Command Z that to undo. So if I drag a little box over that, it will select all three of the keyframes and I can right click them, for example, to change the interpolation style to Bezier, which gives us a smooth transition between the two, these three items. Now I can use the handles to control how the parameter values change over time. And now you see it almost pauses. It comes to a stop in the middle, which is not actually what I want. So I'm going to drag the handles to get a smoother change. So it'll be a slight pause in the middle rather than a full stop. Now we play that back and we'll see how we go. That looks pretty good, but I think it could probably get a little bit larger. So you could use the keyframe editor to change the values here as well to actually make something get bigger if you need to. And I think that looks pretty good. Now I'll go with that, but you know, we can change it later and specific values aren't too important, but I'm pretty happy with how that works. Make sure if you want to change any of these parameters, which uses multiple components like X and Y or X and Y and Z, drag the box before you change the interpolation or before you drag handles or indeed move any parameters around.